Hi everyone, welcome back to Talented Tuesday. I am Admiris Avila. I work in adult services. So today we're gonna be doing the checker pumpkins. So as you saw, I already started with the lines. So I will tell you what you need, but it's based off what you like, what's your preference. So for the first thing would be a paint marker pen. The reason why I recommend this is because in case you're not the type of person for perfection, this helps a lot. So if you want to erase, you could just like smudge it off the pumpkin. So this is one, so paint marker pen, any acrylic paint, uh, multi-surface is probably the best, but you can use any type. I have different types that I will be using or that I have already used. For what I use on my pumpkin was this specific acrylic paint. I used wax, so as the same as last time. I used antique wax and barn wood wax. And you have any type of other decorations, like these little straw ribbons, anything. For the checker pumpkins, you can have two colors or one color. I used one color. So this is kind of close to my final product. So as you see, I only use one color. This is the original pumpkin. So I kept this part, but in order to make it look more antique, um, which is what I like, I then went over it with the antique wax. And for it not to be too dark, I then used a bit for the top is barnwood wax. So this is mostly to show you how to use a marker paint pen because I feel like oftentimes we think it's gonna be easier but if you don't know the little quirks it becomes messy. I don't know if you can see this but here is like my little mess. So what you first do is you shake the marker for like a minute. You just shake it. Mine is already shaped. So I'm not going to do it too much. And then you press down. However, when you're going to press down, I don't recommend doing it right onto the pumpkin because an excess amount of paint will come out. So you kind of press down here. You try to see if it comes out, comes out. And as you're going onto the pumpkin, ignore my little massacred finger. Ooh. You see how like I could easily wipe it off? you're gonna go in and it does start to thin but you could always tap more onto the paper the reason why I recommend the paper is because you might be one of those persons that don't like how all the excess paint is gonna jump onto it and that's what happens so as you see it gets thinner you don't have to make it too thick because you are gonna use paint and so just light lines. I like the pen, especially cause like lately my hands been a lot more shaky. So I, I struggle a bit more with my brushes. The only thing is this brand, once it starts to run out, it starts to like, how do I say this nicely? Kind of explode the paint out. And then, so you don't want to have the clump. See how it's like doing excessively right now? then I just like wipe then I go down you can make as thick or as thin as your lines so this is kind of to show the stroke of it now I'm kind of go a little bit into the paint so I'm gonna do one little sample this was kind of already pre-made I did not make these squares any like smaller so as you're going across it doesn't matter so I'm gonna do the motion of it on my one that's already done because I'm redoing it with the white. So 
it doesn't have to be perfect for well for the final product for me it, it kind of does but when you're first starting you just basically go like that with the motion like don't try to keep it straight don't go straight around give it like that little curve so I'll do a bit on this one on one that's a little thin see how that excess paint came out And then I try to take it across. And then I just like keep going. I repeat the process. So that's how you would do it with the marker paint pen. I'm going to do, you want thin brushes, thin brushes. You don't want thick ones because then you're not gonna be able to do it. You're gonna get all over the place. So I'm gonna put it a bit on the paper. If you don't have a canvas tarp, do what I did. I made a nest out of the paper. And so I just kind of soak my brush in it. If your paint is not catching on, you might want to do it in clumps. And when I say clumps, you, you want a, like a pretty dense layer on top. It doesn't have to be perfect because you're going to any one that you see that is like, oh, it's kind of too lumpy, you could just go over it again. And then if you're gonna put wax on it, it doesn't really matter at that point. So that's that. And then you repeat the pattern. So you do one and you don't do one. But like I said, if you want to um, do more than one color, go for it. But um, my preference, I just do one color. And so I chose this like, like apple red. And if you do mess up, you could just go over it with white again. You could use any type of paint marker. My, my preference is white. I've seen, um, Gold will be a nice color. Um, but I went with the cheaper brand. When you use a type of brush, it's to each their own preference. How thin, how, if you wanted like, kind of like a rectangle version of it. Yeah, or you want more that's like fluffy then go for it. That's to each their own, as I would mostly say. Eh, trying to go a little fast just to show you a little bit on the wax. When you put the wax, you have to put very small portions. And if you think there's too much gonna be on, then Put a dot on each side that's that's what i would do so gonna let that dry and then i will show you the wax again so as you see i'm going over it with the white and i'm not trying to go too hard I press a little bit. If I want it a little thicker, then I go a little thicker. Okay, so as you're painting, you're gonna have to do like a U shape. So you're gonna have to start from one corner, could be any corner, and then 
then you're gonna take it outward. Okay, it doesn't matter if you're a little messy because you're gonna go over it anyway. And then I'm gonna bring this out. The area that you see the most paint is the area you're gonna bring outward to spread. So yeah, so that's how you would do that. And then we're gonna try to slowly move this. And start, bring it down. that stroke it's okay if you overlap the white and then you know, mix it okay okay now that the painting is kind of done we are going I'm gonna show you how I apply the wax and there's no right or wrong answer to this. It's just based on your preference, what you like. I tend to reuse the same brush and still keep some of the paint. So I have this much, it's a lot. So you're gonna dab, you're gonna make sure that it's kind of like everywhere. And then you're gonna kind of do this in fast motions just because you don't want it to like clump and dry too quickly and this is kind of like the messy part so don't worry about getting your fingers like covered in the wax so you're gonna do the top section once you get halfway you're gonna like re-spread it again On this is upward and downward strokes. You don't want to be going across it or anything because then you're just going to give it kind of like a weird uh, motion. And this, the structure is going to change. Okay. Now. You see some parts getting too dark, like I said, just smudge it in. Okay, I'm feeling that I'm touching the max. It's okay if you have like some parts a little too dark, that's fine. That's perfectly, perfectly fine. You need to take off some excess, just smudge it onto your tarp canvas, whole packet of papers, your nest, whatever you have under you. If you have those little sponges, that works if you want to give it a more like very mess, like fuzzy um, feature. But I'm just doing it with a brush. Okay. 
and just okay. Want to add a little bit more? Okay, I say this is good. So that's how you would do that part, and then I add burn wood wax. Same brush. And this is mostly for the top. Want to get rid of the excess. I feel like it's too light, then wipe with your finger. It makes it a little easier. Just I put some on the paper, I can easily grab it. And then with my finger, I'm gonna kind of smudge it down. A lot of this is just you improvising. It's your preference, what you want to see on your pumpkin. And then once that's done, you'll basically do what I did to my final product. Ta -da. As you see, the stems are different. I don't want to be touching too much the pumpkin. The stem, what I did, I used the wax. So you can be generous with this. I'm going to lightly touch one area. And I'm not going to really like try to like fully paint it. I'm just going to try to add as much wax. Doesn't matter. Okay. And then I'm gonna go with the barnwood wax. And then, and then take off the excess. Doesn't have to be perfect. You're just just doing like weird little strokes. And then if you feel like you're putting too much of the barn wood, then go over with a little bit of the antique. Okay. So that's what you do with the stem. The fun part. We're gonna grab one of these garland like straws. And then what you're gonna do is kind of like twist it. So see this one's kind of like already twist. So you could kind of just start. Doesn't have to be perfect. And then you're gonna spread it out a little bit. And depending on how tight you want it, you're gonna try to wrap it around the stem. You could glue it, you could do however you like. I personally don't want to glue it. And spread out certain parts, and there you go. Now, to show you what I did with my decor crate. So as you see, I put styrofoam and tissue paper inside. And then I put like a ribbon, green ribbon I had, and I cut it into sections to make like a floor, and then I put like straw. And once you finish your other pumpkins, you just add the pumpkins. And that's it. Thank you for joining.